That's Firefly Aerospace smoking its IPO at the NASDAQ marketplace ringing the bell. Its shares soared 34% in its first day of trading. Firefly made history in March as the first private company to land upright on the moon. There you go. Firefly's chief executive, Jason Kim, joins me now. Jason, congratulations, first of all, on landing on the moon upright, which I guess is uh, the, the greater achievement in a sense. But, but even so, it's quite a sizable pop on your IPO for day one. Um, you must be very pleased. Uh, you know, we're very pleased because this is a, a momentous occasion for all of our Firefly em employees. We have over 750 employees. Uh, most of them were in Briggs, Texas today, uh, but we had a few of them, quite a few of them in New York with us. It was really just uh, a testament to all their hard work uh, over all these years, all their right. sacrifices. I always wonder though, and, and regular viewers on Quest Means Business will know what question I'm gonna ask you now, which is whenever I, whenever I see a, a first day pop of 30%, or 40%. I always wonder whether you think that the, you, the, the, the offer was mispriced. In a sense, you left money on the table, which I agree is you know, great to sort of get the butt pop, but you could, have, you could have IPO'd at a higher price. Well, it's a win-win for everybody. Uh, yeah, you know, it, whenever there's uh, American companies that are successful doing manufacturing, that's a big win. Uh, you know, we had a lot of conviction and a lot of advocacy and support and engagements from their investor community, uh, and that's really helpful for our business. Uh, you know, when we raise funds, uh, it's going to go towards really improving our technology and our products, uh, rating up the delivery uh, capacity of our products as well, because there's way more demand than there is supply. Uh, and there's missions to the moon. We have annual missions to the moon, and there's infrastructure that wants to be built up in the moon. So we want to be able to support those kind of missions, as well as have more frequent launches of our Alpha rocket. It's the only one ton rocket on the market, and there's a lot of demand for that. And then in addition, we're building a 16 ton reusable rocket. There's uh, tremendous uh, demand for that, especially in the 2027 timeframe when there's a lot of right. scarcity for that kind of capacity. And, and the rockets and the demand is coming from whom? I mean, I, I, we had earlier in the week the story of how NASA's looking to build nuclear, you know, pre-modulated pre nuclear reactors on the moon, uh, but that's some way off. So who are your main customers for your rockets? Well, for our one-ton Alpha rocket, there's a, a tremendous amount of national security demand for tactically responsive space launches. As you know, we did the first and only tactically responsive space launch of a 24-hour turnaround back in September for the Space Force. Space Force wants more of those. They also want rockets to launch test missions as well as operational missions for Golden Dome. Uh, for the 16-ton reusable rocket, there's a lot of demand from the commercial world for uh, these constellations that are rating up right. themselves as well as National Security Space Launch Program. It's fascinating. What I, uh, because we think of space, you know, I'm of that generation when space was done by states, not by private companies. And now we're seeing this bifurcation of research and so much of it being done properly by, if you will, governments and agencies. But if you will, the hard labor, the grunt labor, the bit that has to be done to make it happen is being done by the private sector, which seems to be a very, um, acceptable and welcome development. Yeah, absolutely. The technology has really caught up uh, to the point where we could take advanced technology from the commercial world and apply it to these once dominated missions that only nation states could do. Uh, case and example, we landed successfully on the moon, stable and upright, did 14 days of surface operations, yielded 120 gigabytes of data for NASA. You know, uh, it used to be five countries that did that before us for billion dollar budgets. We did it for a hundred million dollars as a commercial company. All right. Last question to you, sir. Last question. What is your moonshot prob shot pr uh, project? What's the one that you just want to do? If you do nothing else, you just want to do before you retire or fall over. Well, you know, being a veteran myself and having served in the U.S. Air Force, we're an American company. We're based in Austin, Texas, 
and we want to support national security. We're a space and defense company, and things like Golden Dome are really something that we are prioritizing. I'm grateful to you, sir. How honored to have you on the program tonight. Thank you. We'll talk again. Thank you.